We're now taken to the search screen of this part of the database. And you'll notice the search screen looks very similar to a screen such as Google, which you would use to, to research the web. The difference being in this search engine, is limited to a specific group of inf information, specifically articles which are indexed within the Medline database. And you notice it tells you where we are. We're in Ovid Medline without revisions from 96 to 2013. For the purposes of this uh, demonstration, we're going to look at a particular patient care case. You have a 10-year-old patient who has asthma, and you need literature on the following topics the use of antibiotics to treat asthma, as well as the use of steroids to treat asthma. So your parameters you want to consider are asthma, antibiotics, steroids, and the fact that it's a 10-year-old patient. The search steps we looked at previously include searching for the topics individually, and then combining the search results of the topics using Boolean operators and or or, limiting the search results and displaying the search results and retrieving the full text of the articles. The f so the first step is searching for the topics. The topics we're going to search are asthma, antibiotics, and steroids. We aren't going to search 10-year-old patient because you will find that you can target uh, articles to that age group by using the limit command. So we're going to search each of these three topics, asthma, antibiotics, and steroids, uh, separately first. So we enter our first search term asthma, and you'll notice that the box is checked next to map to subject heading. It's more effective to search by subject because if you search by, t by keyword only, you will have to remember all the various terms that a person would use for a child with asthma. Uh, for instance, asthma, asthmatic, etc. Uh, if you search it to a subject heading, however, you, you will be taken to any article on that topic, irregardless of the words which the author has used in the title or the abstract of the article. So we're going to map to subject heading and select search. And now we're taken to a group of subject headings that have asthma within the subject heading. You notice to the right there is an explode uh, box. I'm going to take you to another screen, which you don't have to go to, to just demonstrate what this does. If you select asthma, you are taken to a list of, of subject headings which are listed next to other headings that they are related to, not alphabetically, but in a relationship uh, capacity. You notice at the top you have diseases. Beneath that, there are different types of diseases. And one of these are respiratory tract diseases. A type of respiratory tract disease is a bronchial disease, and asthma is a bronchial disease. Below asthma are different types of asthmas. So, if you're going to explode bronchial diseases, for instance, you would select here, and you'll get every type of bronchial disease. If you explode asthma, you will get every type of asthma, but not other types of bronchial diseases. This is what's called a tree structure, because you can see it looks like a tree with branches. So explosion is used to get not only the overall topic, but more specific topics. This is important because articles on Medline are indexed by the more specific topic. So if an article was on status asthmaticus, it would be listed under status asthmaticus, not asthma. So you would not get articles on status asthmaticus unless you explode the term asthma. So we aren't going to explode it at this point. We're going to go back to our other screen. I just wanted to demonstrate what a tree structure is. So on this screen, if in doubt, I would, I would recommend that you select Explode. So we're going to search for the term asthma, as well as any more specific uh, subject heading. You, you notice there's a box here on the left that says Include All Subheadings. You could do that as an option, but I'm going to show you another way to do it that will target your search more, more effectively. You select Continue, and you're taken to a new screen. This gives you subheadings for the disease state topics, for diseases. And you'll notice that each of these subheadings relates to a specific aspect of the disease. We are interested in therapy. And specifically, we are interested in antibiotics or steroids to treat asthma. So we're interested in drug therapy. And if you look down, there is a subheading for drug therapy. 
You could also select a diet therapy or you could select a therapy as an overall group for articles to look at the overall concept of therapy for asthma or surgery. There are also articles on rehabilitation, diagnosis, etc. But drug therapy is the subheading that we are most specifically interested in. If you look at the top, there's also a subheading for chemically induced. We aren't going to select that, but I want to point something out. When uh, dealing with drugs and a disease, when you're searching for the disease, if the disease, if we're looking at the drug therapy of that disease, you select drug therapy. If we're looking for a disease which is caused by a drug, you select chemically induced. So when searching for a disease, you use drug therapy when you're looking for the therapy of the disease by a drug. And you use chemically induced if you're looking for a disease which is caused by a drug. Please keep that in mind. Now that we've selected drug therapy, we're going to select continue. And we've completed our first search. It's 15,679 articles. Our next search will be antibiotics. So we type in antibiotics. And again, we follow the same process. Be sure that the box is checked for the subject heading. And we're going to search. And we have antibacterial agents for is the sub, subject heading for antibiotics. Keep in mind that when you put in a term that you want to find a subject for, the actual subject heading may not be the same as the term you have placed, but that's OK. And we're going to explode that term because, for instance, if an article has been written on a specific antibiotic which is used to treat uh, asthma, it will be listed under that individual antibiotic's name rather than, than the overall topic of antibacterial agents. So if you want to get everything, we're going to explode it so we get not only the overall articles on antibiotics, but also articles in each individual antibiotic. So you select continue. And we're taken to the screen again, which has your subheadings. Now you will notice that subheadings for drugs are different than subheadings for disease states. And you remember when we looked at asthma, we selected drug therapy with, with the uh, subject asthma for the drug therapy of asthma. Now, when you're searching for the drug, you use therapeutic use. OK? So when you, you're searching for antibiotics or antibacterial agents for treating um, asthma, you select therapeutic use with the drug. Now, if remember we had chemically induced if a disease was caused by a drug. Well, when you're searching for the drug, if the drug causes a disease, you use adverse effects. So those two subheadings are kind of important. They're related to each other, but they have entirely different meanings. And there's also a information, if you select here, it will tell you what uh, the drug is, what the subheading is used for. So we select a therapeutic use and then select continue. And we have our second search, antibacterial agents. We have 62,286 citations. Our third search that we want to do is steroids. And again, we're mapping it to the subject heading, and we select search. And again, we're going to explode the term, select continue. And same as last time, we're going to select therapeutic use. And then we select continue. Now we have completed the first step of uh, doing all of our searches. Now you may ask, why didn't I limit uh, before or combine before I did all three of them? The reason being, it's more effective for you to be able to see what uh, is the total universe of articles that are out there on an overall topic that you're looking for. And it allows you to more constructively and method methodologically combine these searches to uh, retrieve a more organized result. So we've done our searching s step. We search for the topics included in the search. Now we're going to combine the search topics using and or or. Remember, you use AND to combine dissimilar topics and OR to combine similar topics. 
So we want to use OR to combine articles that either of them can appear in every article, but one of them has to be, but both of them do not have to be. So that would be two or three. So in every article that we, we retrieve, we want to have either an antibacterial agent or a steroid. And so we selected two or three, and we're going to select OR. And we have 111,449. That's reasonable because when you use OR, you expand the number of citations because you're including everything from these two groups. Now, now that we have uh, that large group organized, we want to combine it with number one. And now we want to reduce the number to those out of number four that also have asthma. So we're going to include those with asthma and with uh, either steroids or antibacterial agents. So now we're going to combine it with combined search statement four with one, and that gives us 2,024 citations. So now we've completed the combining part of our search. The third part is limiting the search results. And this is where we can we can have information on the 10-year-old patient. If you scroll down, you'll notice that we have some limits here. But they aren't all the limits that you can access. Select additional limits. And you see there's an age component. We want all child from 8 to 10, 8 to 8, from 0 to 18 years, rather. And that will give you for your 10-year-old child. You'll notice there's a limit for full text. Don't go there, because you'll notice that some articles that are on Ovid full text, uh, we, we certainly have. But we may have other articles that are not only full text on Ovid. So you don't need to limit there. I'll show you how to find full text articles in our next step. However, you probably want to limit by English language, so you get English language articles. And you can limit by year of publication. Let's go from 2009 to 2013. So we've limited by year, and we've limited by age of child, and limited to English language. And checked is your last search performed, which is number five, which is your final uh, search, your combination. And then we select limit of search. And we have 190 citations. That's a bit uh, high. Usually, you want to go between, uh, I would say, 30 citations and 130. Uh, you want to give your final set, um, have your final set large enough so that uh, you can go through them yourself, because your best um, filter is your own, um, your own opinion, your own mind. So, um, but 190, we can we can look at those. It's much smaller than 2024, for sure. Um, OK, now your final step is displaying the search results and retrieving the full text articles. So what you do is you, you just select Display. And your articles are listed. And you just slow down, I mean, you scroll down. Some of them are on PDF here, but I'll show you how to get them another way. Say this article we want, uh, we can um, respiratory medicine. You can you select the find it at MCPHS. And we'll tell you if we have the article. And the article is here. And you can scroll down and read the article. Sometimes you can also get it in PDF. Here is a PDF copy. And you can save it or print it out.
Let's look at this other article here. Find it at MCPHS. Here's a different one. And this is available from Elsevier as well. Now, if we didn't have the article, we would you would be able to request it. Say these articles are not available on either of these platforms. They are currently offline or there's a technical issue or, in fact, we don't subscribe to it. You will still be able to request it from Interlibrary Loan. And you select this link. And you'll notice that your article information is listed. And then if you scroll down, you can put your name, MCPHS address, your campus, current status, what department you're in, and date needed by. And then it asks you if you're willing to pay. Please select no, because we. Um, we will get those articles for you free of charge. And you'll receive a copy of the article by PDF in, the, in your email. So that's why it's very important when you put your MCPHS, your email address, put your MCPHS email. Do not put in Gmail or another address. That's very important. So basically, that is your uh, steps for performing a basic search uh, utilizing the Ovid interface for searching Medline. Please contact me at any time if you have any questions, and I'd be glad to help you. Thank you, and good luck.